Hi, uh, this is a quick overview of the MetaHuman DNA add-on. So after you've installed the add-on, just like you would any other Blender add-on, you're going to find the UI for the add-on in the sidebar here. So if you hit N, you'll see this MetaHuman DNA tab. If you haven't imported a DNA file yet, this rig logic list will be empty, um, but you can actually create this uh, data manually and you can link up all the different um, pieces of data, um, but that's a little more advanced. And uh, for now, I'm just going to show you how you can import a DNA file and make some modifications to it. So let's just go ahead and remove that. Um, and we're going to go over here to file, import, MetaHuman DNA. As you can see right here, I have uh, my Quixel bridge downloads, uh, source assets. And you can see that I have just the ADA MetaHuman downloaded, and this is the DNA file. And you can also see that this maps folder is right here. Um, relative to where that DNA file is. So that's where the importer is also going to look for the respective textures. I'm just going to drag and drop this DNA file right here. And I am not going to import the shape keys for now. Um, we can always import those later. And let's just do one mod for now. Run the import. Okay, now that our import has finished, you can see that we have a RigLogic instance that's named after that DNA file we imported. Um, and then all the uh, data is going to be namespaced with that with that same name. And you can see that this face board right here is um, what it's going to be listening to when it's driving the data in the rest of the RigLogic instance. So you can see everything's ripped up and working. All right, I'm just going to give a very quick overview of the UI. So you can see up here at the top of the face board, you have some options like importing animation or exporting the animation onto the actual face board. Then that'll just pull in um, some animation curves and make it an action in the, the scene. You can also pick from these poses. These can be very useful when you're checking your skinning or your shape keys. If we go to the view options, there's some options for different previews on the material. So we can do a mask uh, preview. So the wrinkle maps, there's actually a base texture and then there's three uh, variants of the wrinkle maps. And those are represented by red, blue, and green. So that gives you a better idea of how those are blending with the rig logic. But those wrinkle maps affect color as well as the normals. So sometimes it's really important to look at the, at the normals and how those are being affected. So for instance, if I grab some of these four head controls and I pull up, you can see how that um, that normal map up there is being affected. And we can also switch back to the masks and you can see how much of that's being activated right there. And then finally, we just have a uh, topology preview so you can see what the different uh, topology groups are. Let's talk about rig logic instances. So each head is tied together by a rig logic instance in the actual data. And all this data is very closely knit together. There's a DNA file on disk and the rig logic instance runs the data that it evaluates through that DNA file so that it knows how to update the appropriate three outputs, which are the bones, the shape keys, and then the texture masks. The add-on was designed in such a way that you can have multiple instances of, of rig logic within a single scene. And, and that's actually very useful. And I, I use this a lot when I'm working on custom metahumans. I usually bring in something like the Ada metahuman, which I know is a well calibrated metahuman and a good reference. And then I will duplicate that or something that I have uh, sent through mesh to metahuman and uh, start going from there. So that's why we have this uh, copy button here. Um, so you can duplicate a metahuman. So we're just going to duplicate this existing one. I'm going to call this one a uh, demo. And then for the output folder, I'm just going to choose this test folder and hit OK. OK, so what that just did is it duplicated every aspect of the um, rig logic from this instance to its own uh, unique uh, rig logic instance over here. Um, and it's important to note what is the active selected item in the list because everything in this UI is context sensitive to the active rig logic selection. So for example, if we go back up to the view options and I change this to masks, that affects this rig logic instance because that's the active selection. If I select this one and I switch it to normals, you can see it's affecting this rig logic instance and its respective data. You can see that our two rigs are right here, and underneath those rigs are the actual meshes.
We can always go over here and change the order of these instances and it reorders them from right to left. You'll notice both of these are linked to the same face board. So if we go over here and we update our poses, you can see that they are being affected by these same controls. So you'll notice they actually have two uh, separate DNA files that the rig logic is using in the reader. And this is actually good because as we iterate on this metahuman and customize it, we are going to push updates to this DNA file and it's going to um, be different from, from this. But we can always reference this kind of as a source of truth um, to make sure uh, what we're doing is correct. So I have a lot running in my scene right now, but I wanted to show you that you have um, some options with the rig logic in terms of what you want to be evaluated. Like you can see here, all of our blend shapes are being evaluated um, on the demo uh, rig here, but I could also say, turn off the texture masks. And uh, you can see now that the masks are no longer evaluated or on, the, um, on this metahuman here, I could turn off, uh, say the bones. And so see those bones are, are essentially static right now. And actually with this check mark, you can actually just completely disable um, rig logic evaluation on an instance. So this concludes the overview tutorial. Um, there are going to be more tutorials coming out in the future, as well as um, all this information can be found on our documentation website.